So, what is the revelation principle? The revelation principle basically is that So, now we have now let us look at so this is this is the correlated equilibrium. Now we can say let us how we can ask okay what how do we operationalize it ok. So, so now give players a communication system consider any communication system in which uh, again players can send reports R and get messages M out of it ok. So, reports R i in R i uh, sent by the players and then they do which is uh, uh, which they get me messages right and now what would this uh, what would this be will lead to so if you equip them with this communication system once again i'll write this out so if they have so the problem for the players then is what what report should they be sending and what uh, uh, what action they should be taking with the help of the messages that they get so, the intermediate payoff that a player would get when he knows his own type and when other when when all players are choosing you have a profile of reports are chosen and a profile of uh, functions like this delta from message. So, I am using the same delta because in a sense it is the same ok. So, so delta I have used for deviation plan it is also think of messages essentially as recommended actions that is why ok. So, r comma delta this is what is chosen by players when their true type uh, when the players true type is T i what would be his what would be the payoff that he would get from when there is a communication system like this available. So, he would player i would choose actions the players would choose actions based on messages received. So, you have delta 1 of m 1 all the way till delta n of m n true type is T i ok. So, you, uh, this is so player has received uh, not T i actually I, so, so yeah instead of putting a given so yeah, given T and then you have this and then your uh, you have uh, so there is a summation over T minus i here and then the messages are being generated from the reports that are sent right. Okay. So, the average has been taken by over all messages that can that come out of the system. Because so, the whatever is the randomization that the communication system generates and over the types that of the other players right. So, this gives you a payoff which is a function of the reported types and uh, and the deviation plans. This is effectively now another game a Bayesian game with uh, a Bayesian game uh, with 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 types par with types t. So, this is a Bayesian game with types t strategies strategies gamma i which are which are just reports and deviation plans, not deviation plan, action plans, whatever, what you take based on your message received. So, report R i and an action everyone's clear. See, this is this is the uh, this is your Bayesian game with these strategies and parameterized now by.
by the communication system ok and you look for a Bayesian Nash equilibrium of this game now and uh, it turns out that every such Bayesian Nash equilibrium can be simulated by a correlated equilibrium ok. The math is almost like self evident uh, in fact now once we have seen it uh, we have seen it earlier for the case where the uh, there was uh, you know where players did not have types the same thing exact same thing sort of works out here ok. So, we look for a so, we look for a Bayesian Nash equilibrium Nash of this game corresponds to a correlation. correlated equilibrium ok. That means, if you look for a Bayesian Nash equilibrium of this game you get you can find a mu in it such that the same payoffs are achieved uh, if mu satisfies the incentive compatibility constraint ok. So, this is basically your this is what is called the, the revelation principle in other words that all of this business of communicating etcetera etcetera is equivalent to players talking to a mediator reporting their true and and so and a mediator who implements a a mediation plan in which it it is in the players interest to reveal their true types that's the revelation part so so players communicating amongst themselves in a noisy fashion is the same thing can be achieved by players confidentially communicating with a mediator and the mediator implementing a true type uh, true a, a mediation plan in which it is in players incentive to report their true types and obey the mediators recommendations right. So, it is really amazing that such a thing in fact can be done you know to if you think about it how messy uh, pre play communication can actually get if you try to even model it like in a communication engineering type of way. But that there is such a elegant and neat theory and eventually the whole thing can be uh, characterized by just some linear inequalities in mu that is this this is actually really an amazing uh, amazing thing ok. Now, there is I, I should also tell you though that this is you know uh, I mean as a general research comment see the reason we are able to do this so nicely and the reason you know this eventually all of this reduces down to a bunch of linear inequalities which are you know just a polytope and all that. The reason we are able to do this very nicely is because we are asking the right question ok. The question that uh, that is being asked here is what is the set of all payoffs that can be achieved ok under an arbitrary communication system you know you allow players any you equip players with whatever communication system take the union of all the payoffs that can be achieved by them that is what we are trying to solve for. We are not trying to solve for a more sharper question where here is a communication system tell me what players can do with it right. So, the union is much very easy to characterize, but any one particular point if you I ask you that you know here is a take this communication system tell me all the equilibria that will come out of it right that is not that easy to characterize. Ok, because that is a messy so that is a messy Bayesian game basically you have to uh, you have to solve uh, you know essentially solve for all the Nash equilibria of that game in mixed strategies eventually ok. So, the what the revelation principle actually does is it helps you characterize you know the uh, puts a boundary on everything that can be achieved with a certain uh, that is in scope with a, with a certain uh, set of resources right but if you are if you give me a specific thing a specific resource what what can you do with it that's a much harder question now this is this is often the case in research you know sometimes you know generalizing the problem can actually make it very easy you know, rather than taking a a specific instance okay so I, and and a lot of game theoretic results have this flavor you know because you take a system level view rather than a micro level view of what's going on you say you try to say ok let us leave out the details and let us see what is the big picture that can actually be accomplished ok and then the, that is the sort of view that this take uh, the uh, these kind of results take 